Okay, today's lesson is uh, a thing called latent heat. So latent heat basically um, is when you change phases or states. So change phase state. So there's a, a um, VO there that you can access through the link there. Um, energy of phase changes. So we were talking about state. So we're talking about when we um, change from, say, solid to liquid. versa. And so latent heat, what it refers to is the extra energy, so there's extra energy required and uh, the reason the extra energy is required is because we have a greater rearrangement structure. Alright, so, so say that you've got something that's a solid and you heat it up and you have the atoms in there, they vibrate more, um, <clears throat> but they're still held, held together, you know, you heat up a, a pin and it glows hot, but you know, it's still a pin, so they're still not. And then if you keep heating it up and put enough, that's going to change into liquid, and but now the atoms are able to move around. Not only just a little bit, but well away from each other. So there's extra energy there that you need um, to be able to do that. All right, so in your notes there, that talks about water increasing and then uh, changes into a gas. And so more energy that you need. And so that, that, ex that extra energy is what's called latent heat. Now, each substance has what's called a specific latent heat. And L is used to represent that. And so it's the energy to raise one kilo or change the state, I'll show. Um, So it's sticking in energy and one kilo it changes state from one to the other. Now there's a difference between also what state it, it is changing. So if it's going from um, a liquid into a gas, that's vaporization. from a solid to a liquid, that's called fusion, and generally um, it's more energy is required to change from a solid to a liquid than it is from a liquid through to a gas. Alright, so and then there's a table and there's a table um, in your notes, talks about that sort of stuff. All right, so what else we've got here is, okay, so if we've got a change, we need some heat energy, and we're chosen, changing a certain mass of a substance, and L, it's latent heat, how much required, energy required, to change what one kilo of it from one state to another. Alright, so that's the mass. And that's the, the latent heat. And that's the energy required.
So it says there, the extra energy is required because change of state requires a greater rearrangement of the atoms. All right. So already mentioned in your notes there, when we go from solid to liquid, it's referred to as fusion, it could also be the other way, and liquid to gas or vice versa is vaporisation. All right, so let's have a look at a couple of examples. First, a more straightforward one. Okay, and this one here, it says, calculate the amount of heat energy necessary to change 1.5 kilos of ice. Uh, at zero degrees into water at zero degrees, and we're told the latent heat of fusion. Oops, 3.34. 10 to the 5, 5, not doing too good there with that, 10 to the 5 joules for every kilo. Alright, so how much heat is required? Well, that's simply in L, simply 1.5 times 3.34 by 10 to the 5. And if you do that on your calculator, you get no, 501,000 joule. Now, again, we got multiple different numbers of figures here. We've got three there, we've got two there, and the zero degrees Celsius. Well, we're not using that in the calculation itself, so I don't need to worry about that. So we need to write this in standard form. And it should be 5.0 by 10 to the, and we're moving it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so by 10 to the 5 joule. Now, if you wrote 5.01, there's a little bit of leniency that would be accepted. would not be. Alright, so that one's a reasonably straightforward one. Let's have a look at another one that's a bit more complicated. Alright, in this exercise it says calculate the amount of heat energy required needed to convert 2.5 kilos of ice at negative 20 degrees Celsius to water at 20 degrees Celsius. So as the hint said there, there's three things going on here. So, three processes. So the first of those is we're raising the temperature of the ice. The second of those is we're changing the state. And the third of those is raising the temperature of the water. Alright, so first of all, this first one here. We've got ice solid, and we're just changing its temperature. So we're not changing state, that's heat capacity. And the third of them, when we get to that, again, same thing, we're not changing the state. It's now water, which is a liquid, and it's going from zero to 20. And then, the, so that's also uh, heat capacity. And then the orange one is, um, is our latent heat. All right, so let's go to steps. So first of all, we've got this solid ice at negative 20, and we raise it to zero. So we need to use Q equals MC delta T. So the mass is 2.5 kilos of ice. The heat capacity, when you look that up, of ice, not of water, heat capacity of ice is 2.1 by 10 to the 3, and you can look that up in your notes. And the change in the temperature. All right, how much is the temperature changing? Well, it's going from 20 up to 0, so the temperature is changing by 20 degrees Celsius, and remember 1 degree Celsius is 1 Kelvin, so it's changing by 20. And so, one zero five zero 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 joule in that first 
heating. Now, I'll round these off later when we get to the final answer. So there's the first process. So that's the green one. The next process we're going to look at is changing the state. So that's the orange one. So changing the state is, so the next thing we're doing is we're going from ice to water. So we're changing the state. Um, and so changing the state is Q equals ML. Yeah, right, so latent heat. All right, the mass is still 2.5. It doesn't matter whether it's water, or it's ice, or what it is. It's still 2.5 kilos of that stuff. When you look up the table, the latent heat is 3.34 by 10 to the 5. Which, when we do that calculation, um, we come out with 835,000. And so that's that state change. All right, then finally, we've got the last one, so the red one here, and that's, again, more heat capacity because now we're going to raise the temperature of that water. And so what we've now got is 0 degrees Celsius through to, to 20 degrees Celsius. So again, that's a heat capacity because it's not going to change any state. MC delta T. The mass is still 2.5. That hasn't changed now. This C is different because now we've got a liquid water. All right, so it's different to the ice one, and it's 4.2 by 10 to the 3. And the change in temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, and because degrees Celsius and the Kelvin are the same, it's still 20. All right, when you multiply all of that up, you get 210,000 joule. And so that's our last one. All right, so our total energy. First, when we raise the top ice, so 105000, plus the change of the state, H35000, plus the final raise in the temperature of the water. And so that is 115000. And so if we're going to change and take our decimal point, one, two, three, four, five, six places, so it's by 10 to the 6, and 1 point, 1.15, going to round off to there, so we're going to round up, so 1.2 by 10 to the 6 joule. All right. Okay, so with questions like that, you need to break them down into bits. You need to see what those bits are, and you need to work off that. All right, a couple other quick things in your notes there. Evaporation. All right, evaporation is um, really what we're talking about. Steam. Mainly, not always, doesn't have to be, but that's our most thing. And so you'll notice that in the evaporation process, it doesn't all change from a liquid, and then all of a sudden, it's all a gas. All right, you see bits changing at a time, and uh, it's a little bit complicated, the, the idea, but Essentially, if you've got an atom here of, or a molecule of water that gets enough energy so it can sneak off, then what it's done is it's taken some energy out of that. So if you uh, 
put something like metho on your skin, it feels cool because all those metho um, molecules that are getting off your skin each time they do that, the heat that they get to do that comes from your, your skin. So evaporation is a cooling process because it cools down what it, what it is. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we sweat. All right, so there's a few things, and then you notice there's uh, five dot points there, so the volatility. So I use the metho, that's quite volatile. Surface area. So it's spread out or it's small. Temperature. temperature it's going to be either humidity why we don't feel so good on a humid day because it's more difficult for um, you know the liquid sweat to get into the air because the air's got lots of and air movement all right so that's why fans make us feel cool because they move the air take the um, water molecules away. Alright, so the last thing is cooling. Um, cooling essentially is lost from the system. Alright, and there is a thing that we don't need to actually go into in great detail called Newton's Law of Cooling. And what it relies upon is a couple of things. It relies on the surface area. Bigger surface area. Um, faster cooling. And the temperature difference. really all we need to know about that. Alright, so it's the last one. So problem oops, can't spell. Problem set number three. Again that's in your notes. Tells you which questions from your um, text to the 